In the world of sports, there's a lot of prestigious positions. Big lead pitcher, NBA point guard, or center, depending on which era you're talking about. But there's nothing more prestigious, nothing more sacred than playing quarterback in the NFL. During the golden years of boxing, heavyweight champion was the only thing, in my opinion, that truly came close. Because if an NFL quarterback wins multiple Super Bowls, he can retire and walk around like an ex-US president. If a guy presents you a Lombardi trophy on stage, you're allowed to come hit balls in his backyard. That's, that's the way it works. In recent years, bro, the quarterback position has evolved. It's never been more diverse in terms of play style, archetypes. A running quarterback used to just be a running quarterback, but now this subcategory has been broken down even more. They could be more twitchy and explosive like Lamar, strong and powerful like a Jalen Hurts, or some mix of the two, maybe like a Justin Fields. I didn't know Justin Fields was that fast, and he's like 6'4", you know? Your second reaction playmaking guy's killing it right now, since for the most part, the pass rushers are better than the O-linemen. Being able to routinely make a couple guys miss and still get the ball 60 yards down the field is pretty nice then also sprinkled in is the last of a dying breed here you got your pocket guys guys who rely on anticipation timing great footwork flawless mechanics and preferably a really great scheme to go with it they can't consistently buy time and wait for the defense to break down so they're having to execute within the teeth of the defense everybody that i showed got a little bit of all of this but in my opinion these are like their primary attributes. But we've seen it, bro. Every style works. It just needs to be supported the right way via coaching and personnel. Beyond play style, the personalities range pretty widely. You got your classic kind of boring, say the right thing personalities, your fiery, emotional, frat boy types, lovable nerds, classic leaders, got your new school leaders, lots of different backgrounds, lots of different approaches, proving there's no one way to accomplish anything high level quarterback play that doesn't all look the same but even amongst all of these different types of quarterbacks there's this kid in college who sticks out like a painted sore thumb Caleb Williams is a kid with painted fingernails whose pregame song of choice is Ordinary People by John Legend I love the song choice because I'm also one of these weirdos that can get amped up off a really slow song as long as the messaging in the song means something to me it ain't gotta be upbeat just to get your boy going the nails I could do without but to each his own but top quarterbacks are not usually this eccentric they're usually pretty boring or maybe very boring which allows them to stay away from unnecessary controversy but from a talent perspective bro caleb williams is the best college prospect that i've ever seen yeah i saw andrew luck Yes, I saw Trev, and of course I saw Joey. As far as Mahomes, in college he was seen as more of a boomer bust prospect, but when he got to the league, you know what happened, bro. But watching Caleb is like somebody took NFL Mahomes, plucked him out the NFL, and just dropped him off in college. Almost everybody got him going number one overall, and his camp is so sure they've been making some pretty interesting statements. The reason why I play is, is to be immortal, and to be immortal, you gotta win championships. Last month, his dad came out and said basically that if the wrong team gets the first pick, Caleb might just go back to college. Now, top quarterback prospects and actually their dads have made very similar statements and moves in the past. Eli Manning's dad, Archie, famously didn't want his son playing for the Chargers, so he flexed his muscle to get his son to New York. And I ain't saying he'll have the same playoff and Super Bowl success like Eli, but as a college prospect, Caleb's on a whole different level. And there's no disrespect to Eli, but just in terms of talent and college production, coming into the league, Caleb's ranked much higher, so if Eli can pull an Eli, Eli, then I don't see a reason why Caleb couldn't pull an Eli. And of course, there's other greats like a John Elway who are beloved despite pulling a similar move. So I see a lot of people coming down on Caleb for this, but he did not invent this move, bro. The man studied the greats. But even though that's the case, it's a bold move to pull just two games into your junior season. All right, bros, real quick here before we jump in, a quick word from today's sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. Did you know that you really don't need a lot of money to hire a lawyer and hiring them don't even have to be a long drawn out process? Today's sponsor, Morgan & Morgan, has modernized the whole thing so you can take care of all your legal issues with only your phone. And you can fully submit a claim in eight clicks or less. There's no need to visit law offices or sit through a consultation. You submit case details, sign contracts, all from your phone. So if you ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks without having to leave your couch. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone and then you're good to go. Shout out to Morgan & Morgan once again for sponsoring today's video. Without further ado, Let's jump back in. Mm. 
So I see a lot of people coming down on Caleb for this, but he did not invent this move, bro. The man studied the greats. But even though that's the case, it's a bold move to pull just two games into your junior season. Since Caleb came on the scene, he's been pretty damn audacious. Some of the plays he tries to make, many successfully, I might add. And the whole fingernail thing is pretty audacious in football as it is. But then to use it to say this is a new level of audacity. But recently, his dauntlessness might have hit another level because this man, or more accurately, this man's representative have reportedly been going around and making it known to whoever drafts Caleb that as a central part of his rookie contract this man wants ownership of the damn team remember all them people praying on your downfall multiply that by a thousand Are you kidding me I wouldn't say that being proactive is the NFL's greatest strength it's a really big weakness unless it pertains to them losing their money or a level of control they be on top of that shit. so as you may or may not know Tom Brady is trying to purchase a minority stake in the race but the deal's being held up as other NFL owners are concerned about Mark Davis selling equity to Brady for below market price. At one point, it was even rumored that Brady was trying to do both, buy ownership in the team and start as the team's quarterback. And back in May, an NFL spokesperson said that this was possible as long as three-fourths of league owners agreed to the whole thing. Now, the source I traced that back to was actually TMZ, so some people might question whether the league really said this. Well, a couple months later, seemingly out of nowhere, the NFL voted to prohibit employees who were not family from being able to take equity in teams. This was actually announced nearly three months ago now. You may or may not have heard about it. This is my first time seeing it. And there's a very simple reason why you're hearing about it now. Because Caleb Williams just played the worst game of his career. See, way back in July, Pro Football Talk reported that Aaron Rodgers and Caleb were among some of the players, quote, jostling for equity of an NFL team. A-Rod was trying to get equity in his contract with the Jets, and Caleb was trying to get it for whatever team drafted him. Now, if you're feeling it's okay for A-Rod to ask because of what he's done in the league, and not okay for Caleb because he's done nothing in the league, then let me say this. <laughs> I agree with you. Despite that, I don't know the exact order of the events, but I know that within 24 hours of the A-Rod and Caleb story being published, the league passed this new rule. But like I said, bro, this story happened three months ago and it only resurfaced after Caleb's worst game. And it's funny because a big part of the coverage has been how arrogant he is to play the worst game of his life and then immediately want ownership. And maybe for you, it sounds arrogant no matter when he said it. But the story was so very clearly resurfaced to trigger you and make you feel negatively about the kid. But again, bro, the story dropped three months ago and at the time it came out, no one thought it was a big deal. I'm sorry, but I find it kind of amusing that I after the three interception game, all of a sudden cats is outraged from a three month old story that they didn't give a damn about three months ago. It went from that's a non-story, you know? Maybe he might get it. Then pick, 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 you cannot draft this kid. That story's a red flag and everybody knows it. In an updated article, Mike Florio tried to put it to bed saying, quote, It's important to remember that neither Rodgers nor Williams are currently pursuing this strategy. Thanks to the rule change, they can't. It's an old story and it's currently a non-story. So if you're looking at Caleb sideways behind that one, maybe the added context changes your mind. Maybe it doesn't, which is cool, but you know, that's the real story. With that said, bro, regardless to when it actually happened, some people will see the ask itself as a red flag for Caleb. Do they have a point? Let's try to zoom out and you can't get rid of it, but turn down the bias. Some of us, for whatever reason, have decided we were against the kid and no matter what he does, we'll see it as negative. While some of us have decided that the guy can do no wrong and no matter what he does we'll be there to defend it i'll do what i normally do and abstain from joining either gang because the truth is none of us know how his personality will develop i'm rooting for him but at this point it could go either way caleb's very unique because he's the biggest star in college football at the same time the nil money hit then he went to heisman with two years of eligibility left which gives him a level of leverage that we've really never seen dudes in every commercial some with nfl legends already making legal millions as a college quarterback it's official caleb williams is transferring uh, to wendy's then his play style comps him to the best quarterback in the game and many consider him to be the greatest prospect they've ever seen because of all of this he's in a very unique spot dude got more leverage than the eagles interior o lineman which on one hand is dope like this man is living the dream but i do wonder if too much leverage is really good for young athletes If you follow this channel, you know, I'm the type of person that like balance. 
And for years, the NCAA and the NFL have taken full advantage of most of these athletes. So on one side, I'm looking at it like, bro, I'm glad they're getting theirs. But if it tilts too far in either direction, cats gonna start to fall down. It's like, I look at the NBA. How many guys became stars on YouTube before they ever set foot in the league? They lived out their dreams early before really accomplishing anything, which can create apathy or create entitlement to extreme levels where you're basically dealing with brat type behavior. That said, I don't think that's what Caleb Williams will become, but I can't deny the possibility like the path is there. But some people are painting it like he's already become that, but the moves he makes over the next couple of years will speak volumes. He's 21 years old. He's going to grow and develop, and we'll have to wait and see which direction it goes. But I think the fact that he doesn't fit in that typical QB mode is going to create enemies slash haters who are preying on his downfall. They'll resurface old stories at the perfect time to sway people who are on the fence to going over to the dark side. And they're going to set traps and he's going to fall into a couple of them. Like he'll probably lose his cool and say something crazy at some point. But if he can stay humble enough and stay hungry enough, he can further transform what's seen as normal for a quarterback. He's got a level of eccentricity I don't think we've seen from a top QB prospect since maybe Cam Newton, which means he's gonna have to really be on his P's and Q's because that's the type of stuff that make you a target in the media. If you watch this channel, bro, you know I love Cam. I made videos on my boy long after anybody cared, but I do think that some of the quirks within his personality ultimately took away from his NFL career. At times I felt like it got in the way and created enemies who couldn't wait to exaggerate his failures and gloss over his accomplishments. I'm not saying that it's fair and I ain't saying Caleb should change. I'm just dealing in reality of how it actually goes down. Some people are saying that these quote unquote little red flags are gonna hurt Caleb's draft stock but to me that's a non-issue. One he hasn't done anything objectively bad. Like the worst thing he did was paint some shit on his fingernail. Couple that with the fact that he's way too good bro he's too good to worry about something that's not criminal taking his stock now obviously if he continued to play like he played at notre dame that could hurt his stock but his talent would probably still overcome that not to mention we know he don't want to play for a trash team so sliding a spot or two could be a blessing in his eyes to close it out let's use a metaphor the nfl is high stakes poker and some of these teams have been folding every hand for years but do you know what to make them push them chips to the middle of the table you know what I'm about to say. That's right, a wild card.